Hello, hello, Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA here because it is Wednesday and I'm live every Wednesday at three here on the Dixie Belle paint page to hang out, sit on the floor and play with paint. But today I'm sitting on a squeaky stool. I can hear it squeaking, 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 but that's okay. We are still going to power through because I have everything kind of up on a shelf and it's easier than sitting on the floor. <laughs> so welcome. As always, if I don't happen to see your question or comment as it flies by the screen, I will come back in after I'm finished to answer any questions that you might have as I am working. So today, today, my friends, is prep day. I get a ton of questions about prep, a ton of questions about prep. And I thought, I have to start a new project. It's actually a custom order. Shocker, I hardly ever do them, but I do do them sometimes. Only because she's letting me do all sorts of crazy and fun hand painting on the side. So that's exciting for me. So today I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to sit down and get back to basics and talk a little bit about prep. All right, let's do it. Okay, so the most questions I get probably as a furniture painter, and I think it's because I do this all the time in my house and I'm usually in my bare feet is, why are you putting slick stick on everything? <laughs> I put slick stick on everything. I put on everything. Because I paint in my studio. When I say my studio, technically is a dining room. It's a dining room, but I don't eat in here anymore. This is fully my workroom. I get to come in here and be as creative as messy as possible. And that means that this opens up to the rest of my home. So when I am coming in to do a project, and I have a project like this one, I could do a couple things. I could completely get out my sander. I've got a beautiful surf prep sander, and I've got it right here hooked up to my uh, gorgeous little shot vac. But sometimes I don't want to do a whole bunch of sanding because this is my house, and it's messy and dusty, and I already changed the air filters way too much. So I use Slick Stick as a preventative measure on anything that's slick or shiny. So I thought today I would walk you through exactly what I would do on a regular day when I'm working on a project and you can come along with, all right? Cool, let's do it. So I've got this little, actually it's a set, a set of end tables. Okay, I'm gonna pull out the other drawer too. And I'm gonna show you exactly how shiny it is close up because I want you to be able to see what I am talking about. So is this real wood is the first question. Well, I mean, I can look at the interior and I can see the back and the sides, and this is wood. There's dovetails right here. That tells me that this front piece is probably wood. But let me tell you, whatever is on top of this wood surface, this is like very shiny. Let's see if I can catch the light on it. Can you see how shiny that is? That to me means you better bust out your sander and get that gloss off, sand it, and get it ready for paint. Or be magical and wild and wonderful and use slick stick. So today I thought we'd talk about all things proper prep and how I would actually work on a piece um, from start to finish, okay? So you have a couple options, but before you begin any project, there's a couple things that you need to do. Take off the hardware if you can. If that hardware is stuck on, you can't get it off and you wanna paint it, go for it. No rules in painting, totally paint the hardware. I don't care, but cleaning is essential. And what am I gonna use for cleaning? Well, that is simple. We have white lightning. White lightning is a powder-based product. Here, shaking around in there. It's a powder-based product that you can disperse into water for cleaning. Let's see, you're working on a paste similar, and yeah, see, you put slick stick on it. This is gonna get slick sticked all over today. So I'm gonna clean my project first with white lightning. Um, you can also use Terra Clean or you can use Pristine Clean, but I'm gonna tell you a little secret. They're actually the same product, just formulated for different lines in the packaging in case a retailer doesn't carry all three, okay? Because Dixie Bell has three paint lines, Terra, Silk, and chalk mineral paint, right? So whether it be Pristine Clean or Terra Clean or White Lightning Cleaner, this is the thing that is going to get your projects ready for paint. And let me tell you, if something is really, really filthy dirty, I will take this and put it in super hot water, get out my gloves, get out a scrubby pad and go to town. There has been pieces that I have needed to clean so many times that the water is literally black and it's disgusting. But this piece is in pretty good shape. So I thought I would show you what I do when I clean something, okay? So obviously the hardware is not on this piece. And I keep my spray misting bottle. I bought this at Home Depot for a couple bucks. I actually stuck a label in there. This is pristine clean in here. I'm gonna give it a little shake up. So I leave this bottle like this, okay? You can refill your bottle every time with warm water. You can clean it differently every time with a bucket, a rag, whatever. I just keep it into a spray bottle. I'm gonna take paper towels and I'm just gonna wipe down the surface, okay? So by wiping down the surface, you're gonna make sure that you have removed any oils. This is, like I said, this is clean. 
you're not going to see anything on my rag but there's sometimes when you would do this and you would see like disgusting dripping tannins really red kind of like bleedy stuff on your piece and we're going to talk about proper prep and what to do in that case so once you've cleaned it if you need to you can use a spray misting bottle filled with water and wipe it down but this is pretty darn clean i'm not worried about these pieces so once you've cleaned your project you can do a couple things you can scuff sand now i brought over a piece of sandpaper to show you exactly what i mean if i was say coming in and painting this and i've already sanded it pretty good i wouldn't need to do the scuff sand but if it's just like a light scuff sand that you need like on a regular wood project I would just take my sander or my sanding paper and just kind of clean up those edges. By giving it some tooth to grab onto, what you're doing is giving it an area for your paint to grab onto, right? You're just taking that smooth surface and you're scuffing it off a little bit, but that's just for me to teach you. I'm actually not going to be doing this on this project because I am going to be using slick stick. Hooray, slick stick. So why would I use slick stick on this, even if it's wood? Well, because it's still shiny. If I don't want to get out my sander and do the hard work, Slick Stick is going to save the day. So let's talk about what we would do with Slick Stick and how we're going to use it, okay? So Slick Stick is your gripping primer. There's two primers from Dixie Bell. You have Boss, right? Boss and Slick Stick. Which one do I use when? We're going to answer all those questions today. Don't worry. We're going to put some Slick Stick on this stuff, but this is going to be more of a talking uh, tutorial versus a like watching me paint something tutorial. I have tons of that on YouTube. You can come over there and join me too. <laughs> so what is slick stick? Well, slick stick is what you're gonna use when your wood is shiny or you're painting plastic. Maybe you have a cabinet from the 1970s and that cabinet is like a plastic front, door front furniture. Maybe your piece has metal. Maybe you have hardware that you wanna paint. You can use slick stick for all of those reasons, but you can also use it on shiny wood. Hello from Georgia, I missed your question. I'm good. Okay, perfect, I see some people watching. So when do you use slick stick? Well, you use it on all those cases. Slick, shiny, basically anything in your little brain that thinks, hmm, this is pretty shiny surface. I wonder if my paint's gonna stick to that because there's a lot of cases where I would rather be safe than sorry, right? I don't wanna come in paint something and then boom, scratch off all of my paint because it's not sticking and not adhering to the piece. When you use slick stick, you are getting the best gripping primer for your piece of furniture. And I use it anytime that I'm weighing on the side of caution. Slick stick is what's gonna happen at my house. So I use it a lot. Um, you can apply this with a brush, a foam roller, which is my favorite, or a chip brush. But do know that you're not wanting to wash your slick stick down the drain. It's not good for your, your pipes. So I use a throwaway roller and a throwaway chip brush to apply my slick stick to my projects. That way I can just chuck it in the bin and I don't have to worry about it going down my drain. Um, you can do this over top of, like say if your piece is very shiny, but some of it's not shiny, just do the whole thing. Safe and sorry, keep it all nice, one finish. And it's only in white, I'm sorry, it only comes in white. People ask all the time, can you tint your slick stick? You know, it's white and I wanna paint black. Well, I mean, apologies, but it only comes in white and I wouldn't be adding more than a teaspoon to anything where you wanna keep the original properties of the product, right? So you can do slick stick over top of mud. Um, you can do slick stick, you can do the mud after slick stick. It, it really makes no difference, but we're gonna fill these holes too. So sometimes when you have holes in your piece, you need to cover them up, right? So I have these two holes here for the hardware that was originally on this piece. So I'm just gonna take my Dixie Bell mud. I'm gonna do one drawer. The other one I'm gonna leave because I'm gonna show on video on the other one and I don't need to do both right now. I'm gonna take my little plastic spatula or you can take your finger. It really makes no diff, whatever you like. And you're gonna take your mud and you've got these holes here, right? You can put a piece of tape across the back if you want, but I usually don't. I'm just gonna take that mud and I'm gonna push it into the holes. Once I kind of push it into the holes, you can see that there's a little ridge. I like to overfill with my mud. Because this mud is water-based, it's gonna dry and it's gonna shrink a tiny bit, but also so that when I come back in and sand this back to flat, you're not gonna be able to see where those holes were at all. So my advice to you is when using Dixie Bell's mud to fill in holes, overfill a little bit, then when you're sanding, you can get like a completely smooth finish. That is the only prep other than slick stick that I'm gonna do to this piece. Obviously clean, we did that already. So let's talk about slick stick and apply it to the piece. I'm gonna put this drawer aside 
and I'm going to get out my handy dandy paper, paper plate, <laughs> paper plate, and my slick stick. So when you're using slick stick, like I said, it's best to use a throwaway brush or a throwaway foam roller. I literally buy these anywhere I can get them for cheap. Dollar store or Home Depot or Lowe's, sometimes Amazon. They all fit on the same kind of roller and you can just roll it on. Using slick stick is also helpful with a roller like this because sometimes your slick stick is a little bit thick, right? This is my throwaway chip brush that I'm gonna be using to get into my corners where my roller won't fit. All right, so what do I do? Well, let's aim the camera over here. I have some slick stick in a bottle because I jammed up the lid. Surprise, I couldn't close the lid anymore. So it's in here. This is slick stick. All I'm gonna do is throw my slick stick over here on my paper plate and we're going to put it onto our piece. We'll talk in a minute about boss, but I'm gonna slick stick the top of this so that you can show, I can show you exactly how it works. You're gonna take your roller. This roller actually really stinks, but it's my last one. If you would have asked me, I wouldn't have chosen this one, but say la vie, we will work with it anyways. Okay, so I'm going to take my clean surface. This is not sanded, this is nothing other than clean. And I'm going to roll on, if my roller will cooperate, I'm gonna roll on my slick stick. I know some people like to brush their slick stick on, but I really do feel like brushing on slick stick gives you some ridges that you maybe might not want. A foam brush is sometimes handy because you can really keep this smooth but you're gonna to wanna to cover the entire surface. So these little guys are gonna be painted in silk, but because of the shiny surface, because I don't wanna sand, this is gonna be my insurance that nothing is gonna get that paint off once I put it on there, right? I'll be adding two coats of nautical over top of this, but for now, all I need to do is put on one even coat of slick stick. Does anybody know how long you need to wait in between coats of slick stick and why? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Let's see. Do, do, do. You always use a throwaway brush too, right, David? I know. Listen, also, less things I have to clean, better. So you're going to use two even coats of slick stick, waiting two hours in between coats of slick stick two to four, I always like to say two to four. Technically on the bottle it says wait two to three, but I always say two to four. So what's gonna happen while you're waiting for this to dry? Like why are you putting one coat on and then coming back two hours later to do the second coat? Well, you have to do it that way because you can want this slick stick to dry in between coats as much as possible. If you're not waiting those two hours for this to dry, what's gonna happen is it's not gonna dry solid enough, it's not gonna be a solid enough surface, and your paint might not work as well. It's, it's really important to follow directions perfectly, especially when it comes to slick stick. So after you have on your two even coats of slick stick, you need to wait a full 24 hours before you paint, okay? If you don't wait those 24 hours before you paint, you're gonna be in trouble because this really needs to get dry and ready. Heck, wait longer if you can. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with putting it aside and working on it a couple days. I actually have like a slick sick day. Usually one day a week, I have like all the things that I need to put slick stick on and I line them all up assembly style and I just do them all at the same time. <laughs> then when they're done, they're done and I'm ready for paint when they're ready. Let's see, Tammy says she loves nautical. It is very pretty, it's like a deep, bluish blackish color it's it's really nice so slick stick if you apply it properly if you you know don't cheat the system you're waiting 24 hours for paint you're making sure that you're getting two full coats on there if you really feel like your slick stick is a little bit bumpy or lumpy you're more than welcome to give it a light sand i mean that will help you smooth it out just that little bit more but these two nightstands will get two even coats of slick stick waiting 24 hours before I come in here with my silk paint just to make sure that I am doing my job well and proper. All right, I have not yet as a furniture painter found another product and I've used lots that will give me the confidence for you know the fact that this is the best gripping primer out there. I'm sorry but it is. It's the best gripping primer. I haven't I haven't found another one that I've liked near as much. So there's something to be said about that. I use slick stick probably on like more than half 
of my projects get slick stick. Like I said, nobody wants to waste their time sanding and this is just gonna help me. Plus, if you're painting a nice light color, this slick stick is white, so it's gonna actually give you a nice base for your paint, right? So, what else can I teach you today? Well, what if your piece is not slick and shiny, but your piece is super stinky or super bleedy? <laughs> when I say bleeding, bleeding through, there's tannins, there's natural tannins inside of stain and inside of wood, especially really old wood. And I know you know what I'm talking about, like those dressers from turn of the century that have just been around for such a long time. I think the dirt has sucked into the wood where no matter how many times you're cleaning that piece, it's not coming clean. Your paper towels are staying disgusting. That's a bleeder. Redwood is notorious for that. Cedar is pretty bad for that. Um, cedar has knots in it that will, you know, hold stain differently so when you paint over top of them they're going to bleed through those tannins it's just yuck the yuck factor is huge sometimes when you're repainting furniture so these are my tools to help me get that flawless finish so boss is your stain blocking primer right boss blocks odors stains and bleed through that's the basics of the basics right so b is for blocks odors O is for odor, stains, and stops bleed through. There you go. It's spelled for you right on the front of the, the can. Um, this problem solver comes in three different colors. Unlike Slick Stick, which is only white, you're able to get Boss in clear. Believe it or not, this is clear. I know it looks white. It's a little milky, but it's actually very helpful. When you're applying that product to your piece, it's helpful to see a little bit of where you've covered. Um, and I also like to use a foam roller when I do this for the smoothness factor. But you can get it in clear, white and gray. Now, clear is for when something is, say, wood, but you wanna sand it back after you've painted it and show some distress through. The clear is gonna disappear. You're gonna put it on there, it's gonna disappear. It's gonna feel a little chocolate, chalky. It might look a touch milky, but it's gonna also help your paint adhere very well to your piece. So clear is for when I want to have my wood peek, peek through. White, now you can use boss and white when you're painting light colors. Similar to slick stick, when you are maybe painting a white or a light, you know, anything creamy or milky, having a light base coat is really gonna help you save coats of paint. I mean, nobody wants to waste their pennies on extra coats of paint if they don't have to. So if you have boss and white, that's gonna help you block your odors, stains and bleed through. It's going to help create a nice smooth surface and it's gonna be nice and white for when you actually do put your paint on there. It's gonna be quite helpful for that. Let's see, Boss is really good when you're painting around something light with a dark color and the other way around. Yes, definitely. Think of this as your, this is your extra insurance for sticky. This is extra insurance for anything that just might go wrong with your piece. Boss is always good to put on there first. It really is. It really does help your paint grip so much better. You use so much less paint when you boss first. So there is also boss in gray. Boss in gray is perfect for pinks and yellows. Those pigmented shades of paint that you might be like, oh my gosh, I've put five coats of pink on here and I can't get an even finish. Well, if you put the gray on first, it's a nice neutralizer for when you have to come in on top and add those highly pigmented colors. Kernel mustard, um, prickly pear, plum crazy, even some of the really bright blues like cobalt, any of those ones that just have that off pigment that you know you're gonna have to add extra coats of paint to, Boss is gonna save the day any day. Now, I have a dresser in my bedroom that I bought at an auction warehouse sale a couple weeks ago. Um, and my husband helped me carry it in the house. And the first question he said to me, he says, you know that this, this stinks, right? Like it smells. And I was like, oh no, I want to put this in my bedroom. And I know it smells. It's been sitting in a warehouse for who knows how long. So what I did was clean it with white lightning very well. Inside and out, inside the drawers, back of the drawers, side of the drawers. The whole entire thing got cleaned with white lightning. After that was done, I took Boss and Clear and I did boss, and this was a project and a half, but I bossed the back, the bottoms, the sides, there was no top, I had to add my own, inside of the drawers, back of the drawers, basically anywhere that I could reach and cover wood, I put boss in clear on there. And that really locked in any odor that would have been lingering around. And, and this is a true test to the product because I put that thing in my bedroom. I put the stinky dresser in my bedroom because it is no longer stinky. It doesn't smell badly at all. It actually smells of Big Mama's butter 
and the delicious brand new, the linen <laughs> scent, because I then use that to lubricate my joints. It's a wood on wood glide. Um, and I would not put something in my bedroom if it was stinky. I couldn't, I couldn't put my clothes in it. I might put my husband's clothes in it, but it contains all of my items. So it is no longer stinky. So when in doubt, something smelly, something weird, you're just not really sure. If you boss clear the whole entire thing, you will be a-okay. It is a great way to prepare your project for paint. So, so now you've learned. You have slick stick for anything that you think might be a little bit too shiny for your paint. Anything that you might think might not grip it as well. Plastic, metal, laminate. Heck, you could put this down on a laminate top and do gel steam right over top and nobody would know the difference. Slick stick is your gripper for slick and shiny surfaces. Boss, boss is your blocker for stains, odor, and bleed through, okay? Old magic marker, stinky old dresser, like anything where you're like, mm, it smells a little funky and maybe I wanna use less amounts of paint, Boss is gonna save your day for all of that. All right, so now you know, now you know the process of what um, you can use to get your projects ready for paint. And before I go, the last thing I'm gonna show you is the lines of paint that Dixie, Dixieville actually carries and which brushes go with what, because that is another question I get a lot. Why did you use Terra? You know, why are you using silk? What brush do I use with that paint? So I thought this could be a really great um, tutorial for you to kind of go back to the basics, especially for the newbies, the newbies that are just starting painting, because there's always somebody out there starting a new project and I am happy to help you along the way. So we will start off with the OG, the OG of the chalk mineral paint world. This is Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint. This is available in, I believe right now, 67 different colors. That's a lot. That is a lot of colors, but colors are infinite because you can use the color mixer on the Dixie Bell paint page and create any color you like. Easy peasy, no problem. This product is no VOCs, zero, none. If I open this up and smell it, it smells like nothing. VOCs is the, the smell or order, odor that a product might have and carry, right? Obviously, the more toxic something is, the higher the VOCs. So this is zero VOCs, safe to use in your home, where I am, around your kids, your pets, everybody, you're a-okay. This is water-based product. And this is great for doing solid colors or ombre blending. Since it's water-based product, you can seal this with a couple of different things. You can seal this with wax, you can seal this with clear coat, you can seal this with gator hide. It's up to you. Or if you choose, you don't have to seal it at all. This will cure after approximately 20 to 30 days and you are good to go. So. What brush do I use with chalk mineral paint? And this one actually goes both ways. For chalk mineral paint, you could use whatever you like. Do you want a more textured finish? You could use a natural bristle brush. Do you want a more smooth finish and you're doing ombre blending? You could use a synthetic brush. Chalk mineral paint goes either way. Either brush works, but for a smooth, beautiful finish, I do recommend a synthetic brush for chalk mineral paint. Got it? So that's the OG, that's the first one. That's the one that's been around the longest. And we next have silk. What silk? Check it out, silk all in my mineral paint. So silk is a line that came out a couple years ago from Dixie Belle, and I actually fell in love with this. At first I was having a hard time because silk is the kind of paint that you would use, say one color on top of your entire project, and you just want one, one shade of paint. That's hard for me. <laughs> You know I'm a multi kind of color girl. I'm all over the place. But I have learned that this has a purpose, especially for tables like this that I need to paint in one color. This is gonna save my time and energy. Silk has a built-in top coat and a built-in primer. So do you remember when we talked about boss right here? Silk has the equivalent of one coat of clear boss inside this product. That means if you get a table that you're like, hmm, maybe it's a bleeder, but I'm not really sure, and you use silk on it, you are already got your one coat of boss mixed in, and you are completely A-OK -okay for that. So this will also leave your product with a kind of like a lustrous shine. It's got like a really pretty shine to it. It's hard to explain, especially the dark colors. There's like a luster to this paint that I haven't seen with the other lines, and I really love it because once you've painted on, your couple coats of silk paint, you don't have to top coat. You're finished and you can walk away. If you wanted to extra top coat this, you can add wax, you can add clear coat, you can add, um, you know, any of the top coats are gonna work on here, but you don't have to. 
you're, when you're finished, you're done, you walk away. It's self-leveling, so it always looks like nice and shiny and smooth, but it is recommended to use a smooth synthetic brush when you use silk all-in-one mineral paint. Using a brush like the Scarlet, number one, it fits smack dab right in the container in the 16 ounce, but it allows you to get a really nice even finish. And then, like I said, it self levels and when you're done, you're done. Silk is recommended to wait a little bit longer in between coats. Um, I like to make sure that everything is scuff sanded very well with silk. Everything is cleaned really well. I will lay the first coat down and wait until it is completely dry before I add the second. Because if you start pulling at that first coat before it's dry, this dries in a different manner than the regular chalk mineral paint and you'll see that it, it grabs and pulls that paint a little bit. So my recommendation is wait an hour or two in between coats of paint for the silk all in one. Let's see, I missed the question. You love silk? Let's see, and somebody else is saying that it has a sheen on it between matte and satin. Yeah, it's a funny sheen, you know, David. I like those dark, like the anchor and the deep sea and the nautical. And when you look at those pieces in the light, they literally glow. Like they glow. Silk, is, this is a great product right here. You're gonna, you're gonna wanna let this cure a little bit longer, at least 30 days. Um, but it's mildew resistant too. So if you're painting cupboards, like I've done my kids' bathroom in silk, I've done my kids' dressers in silk, they leave water bottles, they leave jars, they leave glasses. There's nothing wrong with that furniture. I even had one kid have a lizard tank live on top of their silk painted dresser for like two years and it was mint. You couldn't even tell. And I was like, how is that possible? Children are disgusting little creatures that have lizards and even more disgusting little creatures. And that dresser looks like a million bucks. So that's a win for me. There's a lot of pieces in my house painted with silk, beds, cabinets, dressers. I've even painted my outside planters in silk and they look better than anything else. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so what else do we have? We have Tara, Tara, Tara is one of my favorite paints. Where did I put it? Oh, it's here. So Tara clay paint, this is, oh, I also forgot to tell you, no VOCs for this guy too. You're free and even on this one as well. No smells shouldn't bother you at all. So Tara is Dixie Bell's um, newest baby. So this is only available, I believe in, I wanna say 17 or 18 colors. It is a clay paint. Clay paint is thicker, y'all. It's like a, a thicker kind of a pudding. It's a little more viscous. Clay paint is a water-based product. All of them are water-based products, but it does have a low VOC. That means there's actually a tiny bit of an earthy smell. It's not a bad smell at all. It's not a chemical smell. It literally smells like outside. It smells like the dirt. So Terra Clay Paint is great for texture. This is my go-to paint when, say, I have a piece that is heavily damaged that wouldn't look really great 100% um, in a smooth, silky paint, that it needs to be textures. So I'm going to use my Terra Clay Paint with my natural bristle brush. It's recommended to use a natural bristle brush because this is really thick. And when I do this paint, I'm pouncing it on. I'm building those layers. You can reactivate this with water. So if you wanted to paint one full even coat, say in a black onyx, wait for it to dry 100%, then come in and stipple on another color, and then start spraying with water to kind of reactivate that paint and move it around. Your base coat should be really dry before you get in there and start mashing, mashing your paint but you can actually create gorgeous, boho, drippy art with this paint. I have painted furniture, I have painted terracotta planters, I have painted canvas art, I have done all of the things with this paint. And if you ask me my favorite out of all three lines, I am going to say Terra every single time. Because of the artistic ability to get something looking like nothing else that I've ever painted before. I painted a paper mache angel last week with Terra that now looks like stone. I rusted and crusted it with the patina products and you would never know that it is paper. <laughs> it's paper. You can't tell. It looks like a, like a garden statue. It's fabulous. The other thing is Terra is available. Actually, all, all of these paint lines are available in different sizes, but Terra is newly available in the four ounce size. So I think this paint is the one that I've seen the least amount of people use because I think they're scared. They're scared of Terra. And they shouldn't be because this makes any any painting like an artistic painting. You can get it in those tiny little four ounce containers and a little bit of it goes a long way. I've painted pieces with using the just the terra clay paint that's on the lid. I haven't even had to dip it into the jar. These jars are a little bit different than say the screw tops. You do have to hammer them in to close them. 
Um, but other than that, I think that this is the paint you should try. If I, if I were to meet anybody on the street and they say, oh my gosh, what's your favorite paint? It's gonna be Terra, covers damages, adds texture, easily blendable, like you're gonna get some gorgeous ombre blends. They have a pistachio green that is out of this world. And mixing that in with the other colors, creating drips, using your tools and your fingers, it's just the most fun. It's the most fun out of all the paints. I really, really enjoy Terra. So if you get a chance today, I recommend, as a new painter, if you're watching and you're looking for what products to buy, try the Slick Stick, try the Boss, and grab a four ounce of the couple different paints and, and play with them, experiment with them, see how it works for you. Terra can be used with a chip brush, like I was using to apply my um, Slick Stick in the corners. These chip brushes are only a couple bucks and you can get the best results with a little tiny chip brush and some Terra. You would be blown away. I would love, if you have questions about how to use exactly this paint, go to my YouTube, at the top drawer RBA. I have got so many videos up there with Terra because I said, it's kind of my baby. It's my favorite. So when I find a favorite, I use the heck out of it. And you can blend the colors around too and mix them up and, and make some beautiful combinations. But I think everybody should try some Terra today. So that is it, friends. Have you learned something today? You learned about all three lines from the Dixie Bell paint line. You learned about Slick Stick. You learned about Boss. Are there any questions before I let you go that I can help you with today? Because that is what I'm here for today. This has been the, uh, the tutorial day, the prep day. What kind of paint do I use? What brushes do I use? I mean, I get these questions on the daily in my email inbox, so I thought it might be nice to hop on here and have a video for you to reference if you have any questions. And there's so many great Dixie Bell brand ambassadors that have you know, amazing videos and amazing blogs. You're gonna be able to cover all of your bases. There is really nothing that we, uh, that we haven't done or can't do with you, and we'd love to see what you create with your Dixie Bell paint products. But we're always here to help, and we're always here to answer questions. So like always, if you have any, please send me a message. My name is Melissa from the Top Drawer RBA, and I'm always here to hang out and play with some paint. So let's see, what are you putting on the sides? Mm, are you talking Are you talking about my, my cabinets here that the lady's letting me paint my things on? So these little cabinets, these, these tiny little end tables, are actually very kind of 19, I wanna say 80s-ish with the cutouts. She brought the hardware, she brought me the cabinets, I'm painting the entire cabinets in nautical, but on the sides of these pieces, I'm gonna be painting a tree branch with dogwood flowers. Remember, remember when I did the dogwood on the canvas a couple weeks ago? I'm doing that on the sides of these pieces and it's gonna be fabulous. Only on this side and then on the opposite side of the other so that when they're flanking the bed, you see the art. Why not have functional art on your furniture? I mean, that's the best. That is the best. Uh, see, I'm glad it was your first time watching, Stephanie. Maybe you learned something today. I'm always happy to help. Um, like I said, I answer every message I get, and this is part of my job, to be a teacher and an ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint. I love it. I love it. So I'm gonna go and uh, sit on the floor and just finish my slick stick projects because I need to get two full coats on here by the end of the day so that I can start painting tomorrow. Because remember, you need 24 hours in between painting and slick stick before you can do that. In order for it to work, you gotta do the proper prep. All right, everybody, I hope you have a fabulous day. I will check in with you next week on Wednesday at 3 p.m. But please check my YouTube at the Top Drawer RVA because I guarantee you in my Back to Basics series, I will answer every single question that you might ever come up with about paint or Dixie Bell paint products. Take care, everybody. Bye.